Support Services meeting to order. And with that, I need a motion to approve the minutes of last month's meeting. Supervisor McDonald, second by Supervisor McDevitt. <laughs> Any corrections or additions? All, right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. With that, we will turn it over to the Board of Elections. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We, uh, we wanted to take an opportunity this morning to, uh, as you know, most everybody knows, uh, Emily Gladys has left the Office of Board of Elections. Uh, she landed a new job with the state that she was looking forward to taking. So uh, I will announce that she's coming back to help us out on a per diem basis during election period, you know, election time, which is, would be a great help to us. Um, having said that, uh, Beth and I had talked and we wanted to bring our deputy over and just introduce him to the community. So they, uh, my new deputy is uh, Damian Hayes. Damian's been with the Board of Elections for a few years now. He's been our guy that's been doing our machines and getting the ballots out and doing the definition of ballots. And I interviewed Damian. Uh, it was a good fit. We uh, we didn't miss a beat by uh, by bringing Damian in. So. Great, brilliant, great. And my deputy Kim Ross. Um, she's been here since I've been here 15, but just in case faces haven't crossed paths, that's Kim. Good. Thank you for bringing them to introduce them. Appreciate that. So, a um, couple of things we just discussed, and a lot of it's probably budget related. Um, two things that we're doing right off the bat to um, have some savings is nonprofit. First thing is nonprofit mail for our yellow mail check cards that everybody in this room gets as a registered voter in Warren County. And if you happen to get one of those cards and that person no longer lives in your household, would you please let us know and don't throw them away because they are quite costly. In the past, we have, um, it's been almost $10,000 to get those mailed. With a nonprofit, we should save approximately um, $3,700. But those cards are very important. We just don't do them for we need to have that information to keep our database accurate. We run in into inspectors having our class that, well, my kid's been moved to Connecticut for 10 years. I said, are you getting that yellow mail check card? We need to know that. Excuse That's me. informative. Beth? Beth? Yeah. Do they, do they return the ones that are undeliverable, the post office? Or yeah. Does it, they do? Yeah. They do. Just the ones that people get delivered? Like if, yeah, if, um, like my son, moved away and I still get that yellow card and it's just, I throw it away because I know he's not registered. The Board of Elections doesn't know that. Oh, sure. Okay. LP got delivered. Okay. So we assume that that person still lives at that address. Maybe just a little email to the town clerks to the... We have done that. We have done okay. post-its. Um, uh, it's on our web page when they go out. Um, last year, actually in 15, we put an ad in the newspaper because of our redistricting. Um, and we'll get into that with redistricting for Queensbury too. They have our, everybody in Queensbury has received a new acknowledgement card, whether their polling place has changed or not. Because with that, uh, a lot of people have changed. And we are human, we tend to go where we've always go to vote, and it will probably still happen um, this year, even with the hundreds of phone calls that we had received, either to say why this happened or complain that it did happen. Especially Ward 4 in Queensbury changed largely. And what we did, uh, Beth and I sat together and tried to keep most everyone that was voting at West Queens Falls Firehouse where they encompassed all of Ward 4. We tried to keep them there. So now we have three different wards voting in Qu West Queens Falls Firehouse, Ward 2, 4, and Ward 3, 4. And all of Ward 4 are now in West Queens Falls Firehouse. So it saved a lot of questions for a lot of the voters that we're able to still go to where they would normally go. But we have had a tremendous amount of phone calls for people that have changed up. And now with Ward 1 being as big it is, as it is, having to drive across town to go to the community center. But uh, they, I know Queensbury has put it on their website as we asked. Their new uh, maps and new wards and new districts, it's all on there. So uh, we, we can refer them to there, which is pretty helpful. The, the redistricting made a big difference, though. There was 9,000 voters in Ward 4, and uh, by making these changes, I think each ward now has about 3,500, which is kind of important. Actually, actually, Ward 4 went from the largest to the smallest. Mm -hmm. uh, ward 1 took quite an increase, but it was by, by New York State <coughs> election law is why we had to re redistrict. 
and that's that's why it did one voter one one person one vote type situation that's why it was done but it's fully completed now it's accepted by everyone it's all set to go and uh, we'll see how it works uh, come November I guess yeah. <laughs> and then with that we did have a little increase in our postal because we did mail those acknowledgement cards to 19,000 plus voters at a cost of $7,985 is uh, 19,000 in Queensbury or? That's active and inactive. Yes, with yep. 19,000 plus. Wow. Yep. Um, so moving forward um, with that yellow, with the nonprofit, we'll save money moving forward on, on that, that yearly uh, mail check card. And then the other thing we are looking into doing is um, moving our own voting machines. Um, and there are some. Should be a sheet there yep. uh, mm -hmm. in your packet that will kind of explain how we're going to do that and how we intend to do it. So we should have a potential savings there of 4,600. We're going to uh, use our own people. We're going to rent trucks from Penske. Uh, we checked both Penske and Enterprise. Enterprise didn't offer a government rate. Uh, that's why we ended up going with Penske. They will also deliver the trucks up here to a location on uh, uh, Quaker Road to where our people will pick them up. They'll go pick them up, deliver the machines. We have uh, got an agreement with the town of Queensbury. They are going to come back and assist us with the machines with their sign crew. So all the deliveries there will be assisted by the town highway. And then uh, all the other districts will be delivered by our crew. And, uh, as Beth said, we hope that uh, our savings will be somewhere around 46, 46 to 4700 dollars. Very good. Great. We're gonna try it this year. See what happens. Yep. Mm -hmm. All righty. And then item number two, um, we did have some grant money that was left over from 06 um, when we were mandated to go to these new uh, voting machines and be HAVA compliant which we spent uh, last year because we were, you know, afraid that it was going to sunset eventually and go away and we didn't want that money to go away. And we did need to um, have an emergency ballot bag if for some reason we had to evacuate polling places. We needed a place to put ballots. So we purchased those and then we also purchased large um, polling site flags because the ones that are on the ground, we had a lot of people say, you know, if cars parked, they couldn't see those and such. So we did spend that money up, um, and then it was returned um, January 31st of 07, <coughs> that grant money. So we are kind of hoping that we can use that money for some other um, upgrades that are definitely coming through NTS, which is our software that does our voter database. And one of them is the VR, VRA, the Voter Referral Application System, which we feel would be useful to us this year with Queensbury redistricting, especially with Ward 4, because again, we are humans, we go to the same place we've been going for 25 plus years to vote. Um, with this, well, our coordinators can look up those people instantaneously on a laptop. And if they're in that building, direct them, like Ward 4, there's going to be um, three different wards in there, make sure they get to the right table or if they have to go across town to the activity center or here to the Warren Center, they're able to have that information at their fingertips rather than calling the Board of Elections. Um, we need to get through. There are just four of us answering phones that day, um, so it should speed up that process. And this is also a leeway into electronic poll books, which um, both Bill and I are hoping will be approved by the state. I think it would be a benefit also um, in that process. Uh, money savings in paper and um, inspectors. Uh, I guess I have to refer this over to the county administrator. She said they have this money and they'd like to use it. So how, how I guess what she... When we got it back, it went, it went to the fund. general fund. And what we're asking is for it to come back to the Board of Elections to use for these VRAs. It was a grant, a HAVA grant. If we didn't use it, the money was going to be taken back. So they sent us a notice and said that the money's got to be used. That's when we bought that equipment and, and the way it is is as normal with state and federal grants it's reimbursed once you spend it so it was spent and out of our budget from 2016 and when it was returned in 2017 it was returned to the general fund instead oh, of our well, budget work with the budget officer and treasurer's office have you talked to treasurer's office 
Um, no, we not haven't talked. Not about, I, I didn't. Well, we did. We did only to find out that they did get yeah. the check, and yeah. that's how we found out. We got yeah. told when we called to find out where it was. They said, "Oh, we sent that back in January," and then where's Frankie? Oh, there. I was going to say this. Yeah. So that is something that we can. Okay. okay. That would okay. be great. Yeah. I would go over and stand at their door. <laughs> tell you what you want. <laughs> okay, that's great. Hey, good. I'm glad we got that. That's great. Because we're looking good in our budget. Um, Let us know if you have any problems. Okay. Okay. Um, but we NPF is by April of 18. There's going to be a lot of upgrades, and we are going to need some, um, you know, a software, um, probably more maintenance fees. We have a five-year contract with them, which uh, expires in December of 18. And we are assuming with all these upgrades that is going to be a slightly higher cost for us because um, they'll be maintaining that VRA system. And then there's also, a, we just got this new thing on the bottom. We didn't even put it in our um, agenda today. Um, it's called the scan flow, which kind of helps our, our workflow quicker also. And we are going to see that in 18. Um, and that on hardware, again, also we'll need, and um, that's another thing we would like to talk about is um, the uh, IT computer slush fund. Um, <laughs> yeah, I right, let's <laughs> hold up for a minute. Okay. Um, right. Uh, you had a question. So just a, like a quick one on the agenda here. It says mm -hmm. you had grant shoe box money left over from 2006. Mm -hmm. Is that a typo? Six. Nope, it was 06, because oh, that's wow. when all the grant money came in um, for that upgrade of HAVA. For which the purchasing the machines and all that stuff. Help America Vote Act. Um, we had to, well, not, I wasn't involved actually at that time, only with doing the machines. Okay. Um, but they upgraded polling places to be handicapped accessible. They put wow. in doors in Thurman and parking lot in Johnsburg and the machines and the supplies needed to run those machines. Now, 11 but years later. Yeah, that money that's was That's when they sent over. us a notice, right? They sent us a notice and told us that yeah. it was going away after 10 years in 2016. Yeah. Going away, either use it or we're going to take it from you. Okay. So okay, now we'll move on. Oh, okay, Supervisor Sieber. Thank you. Uh, it just as it relates to your transfer funds from the general fund back in your budget, uh, Mr. Uh, County Administrator, would that be something that a resolution would have to go through finance um, to move the monies? I don't know. We'll we'll check into it first. We'll it's just it, sh it should be a simple. You know, for our next finance meeting, if that's okay. something you need right away, that date should be on your. Right well, I think it, it, as best with getting to, uh, I think uh, we've been working with with Mike. He's been helping us a lot with this NTS upgrade that's going to come. I, I really don't. I don't want to make you as nervous. I don't think it's going to have a huge impact on our budget. I think we're going to be able to finagle it around with what we have and that stuff. But with Mike's assistance with the the NTS. Um, he, uh, one question I do have, I know uh, uh, the, the uh, IT department has a reserve, has a, basically we, I can remember years ago we started it, but they have a reserve. Our computers, from what I understand, Joanne, maybe you can answer this for us, are bought out of well, that reserve? out of the reserve fund. Could we go okay. back kind of to get us back on the agenda where we should be? We, yeah. I think we've solved the problem with the money. They'll deal with <coughs> the treasurer and right. Frank. We'll get that one squared away. What we need to do now is move on to item number three. Yeah. We're kind of getting a little off track. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and if everybody has a copy of um, the bills that um, are charged back to the, the city and the towns, um, from resolution 599 of 05, it was in place that the Board of Elections charged $1,200 per ED. So it has not increased. Um, moving forward, we're servicing actually more voters. And with all these upgrades and increased costs of, um, that we're paying our inspectors and such, even though we are saving money, but you know, things, uh, the upgrades are going to be costly. We would like to propose to raise that uh, fee to 1500 per ED, but okay. with uh, this would be going into effect 2018. 2018. Oh, 2018. Right. Yeah. So we'd, we'd be okay. Okay. Seconds. All right. So we're looking to increase it from 1200 to $1,500. Yeah. So we need a resolution in order to do that, correct? All right. Would someone like but, to make Well, oh, oh, wait. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, there are some 
things that might be happening with EDs and increasing that size from 1150, what it is presently, to up to 3,000 per ED in election law. So number of voters, number of voters, voters per correct. election district. So I would like to see, and we talked to this, that that remains a flat fee. Say Bolton, for in instance, they would become one if we could increase those EDs to 3,000 plus. So we would like to see that fee still be 3000 for that town because we're not saving, we're still putting out the same amount of work, it's the same amount of voters, same amount of machines, same amount of inspectors, same amount of ballots, and et cetera. And, all, and basically for the town of Bolton, it's, it's basically a $600 a year increase um, to the board of, for your voting. Um, of course, the biggest one that takes the impact, the, the, the hardest hit because of EDs, will be the town of Queensbury. I mean, they go basically from 19,200 to 24,000 per year. And that's, again, for the voting people. I mean, the, the amount of population you have. And that's, so that's where that increase comes from. Now that hasn't been increased since 2005. It actually took a t decrease in 15. in 15 when they reduced the districts. Right. And that's when we noticed it's starting to fall short on our end because the voters haven't, as, as Beth said, the voters haven't changed. We still, have, in fact, we have more voters. Um, and the, the, all of our paperwork is the same. Just because the town of Queensbury lost two districts in the redistricting doesn't mean we lost voters. And we still have to produce proper equipment for them. Yeah, just just a reminder, you know, get it. Let's, we need to settle this by July of this year for the town so they can budget in their town yeah. budget that's whatever we the cost is. So we, whatever you come clean on, you know, we just, we just need to finalize it by uh, early summer. What is this so, so they for? Know for? For our machine maintenance, our ballots, to pay our inspectors, uh, to deliver the machines. Used for everything. It's basically the general fund that we use for everything on it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, supervisor, Conover. Um, also, we have an additional yeah. Very, yeah, very well put. So we're moving those machines. We're, we're going to bearing that expense uh, for an additional primary that Correct. Uh, I guess it's fair to say it didn't exist. Right. And, uh, it's at a certain point in time, so it's not for that. We had another event, election event going on there now. And that's one of the reasons we went back to trying to move the machines ourselves. I mean, we were paying $6,800 per election, primary in general. You were sixty-eight hundred dollars to the movings, and now we're going to do it ourselves. So we're hoping that'll be a lot less too. But all right, Supervisor Schieber. Um I think you've done a great job of saving money and being really creative and thinking outside the box in other areas. Are you looking for a resolution on this today? That's why it's just okay. I'd be it. happy to make that resolution. Okay, the so second Supervisor McDonald. Any more discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, number, uh, number four. Madam Chair, this, this, this will move on to finance now. Will this, does this go over to finance or is it? Where that goes now. You want to finance? She doesn't, doesn't think so. No, okay. she doesn't think so. Frank, it doesn't go on to finance, does it? I wouldn't think so. It's not a county budget. Right. Okay. 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 <laughs> it goes right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Number four. <clears throat> and then lastly, um, we actually kind of solved this um, doing some research um, <clears throat> back in 05, actually this was 10, spending money from that, that grant in 06, we purchased uh, DVDs which went to every polling site to show an educational video on how to use the new voting machines. We haven't used them in a couple of years, um, it's taking up storage space, um, we want to let them go. And we're actually thinking about donating them. And that's kind of where, if anybody has some suggestions, we're thinking senior center, um, schools. We had to do some research on it because they were bought with the HAVA grant money. Mm -hmm. And we weren't sure how it worked, being that it was grant money, how we disposed of them. We ended up doing the uh, code federal regulations, which is under $5,000. So after talking with the legal department of the Board of Elections, uh, we basically own that, a property, that property. Again, what happened was we bought them to build HAVA grant, HAVA paid it. So they never, the state or the federal government, never took possession of this equipment. It's always been our equipment. 
we've now got the code and I've talked with Julie. I think she's I've talked with Julie, Julie, we finally found it, so it's basically just a matter of giving us permission to go ahead and as Beth said, we'd like to see if, I mean, they, can, they could go on eBay, but we'd like to see them go to nonprofit organizations if we could, if we can get a list from the supervisors as to who they might like to see. They're actually a TV DVD monitor. Uh, they, they are TV capable but uh, they're a great display item for a senior uh, center, for a church, for any of these organizations. So if that's what the, if the committee supports that, that's what we'd like to see done with them is don't What is the feeling of the committee? Supervisor Sieber? Just, I'd like to see an equal opportunity, equal access for all the not-for-profits in the area. I don't know if there's a need within the county for any departments to have this. Maybe there should be a county wide email, but if not, maybe Mike could work with you on the website or your social media site, you're so good with that, mm -hmm. to be able to offer this opportunity to any not-for-profit that has a registration number and, and could provide you with you know, that. And um, municipality. Uh, yeah, or yeah. a municipality. Yeah. But I think if we put it out on our website and social media, and then you can make a... How about Mike? Would he have any suggestions for us regarding that? Uh, there, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. a DVD TV uh, thing, Mike, that we've got downstairs. Um, we are thinking maybe small libraries. Uh, some of the northern counties have got small libraries that don't have the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. And again, some of the smaller senior sex or right. places, some idea. of the... And I mean, you could put them on eBay and we may get a few bucks out of them, but I think we'd be better served getting them out to the agree. nonprofit. Do we need a motion for that, Kevin? Yes, you should. All right, so then would someone like to make that motion? Supervisor McDonald, second by Supervisor McDevitt. Any more discussion? Oh. Supervisor Leggett. Yeah, so we have disposal policies for the county? Surplus equipment, yeah. I'm sure they're working we'll, with we'll Julie. We'll follow those. Yeah, they, yeah, he's been working with Julie, he said, so they're kind of getting a handle on it. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I saw a discussion. I'm sorry. <laughs> can, I, can I just have a clarification? We have a disposal process for not-for-profits. You have a disposal right. process for all your surplus equipment. You have to declare it surplus, right. and that's what you're doing today. Okay, but I've just come to find out in many different towns that there this is always uh, we want to give it to not-for-profits but what's the proper way to do it problem and you know it tends to be then who knows who gets the first bite of of getting that donation and something like that can make a big difference to a lot of not-for-profits well I'd, I'd like to see sure my our thought Beth my thoughts are we'd like to see the list comprised come back to committee or whatever and say okay here's the list we don't want to be responsible for choosing who's going to get them and who's Absolutely. not. We want the Board of Supervisors to do that. So if we can get a list together, bring it back to the committee and say, here, you guys make a decision where you want this stuff to go, I think that's the best route. That way you guys can, can hash that out yourselves. I, I mean, that's our thought if we can get the list together. Oh my God, that's felt the pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's basically a referral then that's going to come back to us to say this one, this one, this one. All right. Oh. Yeah. Any more discussion? We are really running late I here. I know. <laughs> just, just, just to clarify for Supervisor Sieber that most towns do have policies on how to um, um, get rid of their assets. With not-for-profits? Because uh, that's where the issue uh, I've seen. It's, 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 it's a yeah. process. It, it okay. depends on... Excuse me, Mary? <laughs> just to clarify, basically today you're just going to vote and say that they're surplus property, and then you'll come back and you'll decide what you want to do with them. Okay. So sure. today you're just saying we don't need them. And okay. then in the future, you can decide what to do back. Okay. Perfect. And uh, just one quick question to the Board of uh, Elections. The voting early, has that made a difference? Is there many more people? We don't have early voting in New York State yet. Okay. Yeah. Right. We have absentee voting. Is early. that in, oh. oh, yeah. We'll know more about that after we go to the conference yeah. this uh, the third week of June. Okay. And that's one of the things that are up. It's been on the legislative agenda for... Okay. Do we have the motion, the resolution in the form that we need it, Amanda? That's what I want to be sure of. Well, right now you have a motion to just to donate them. It's my understanding they're going to develop a list and bring it back to you. So it's really just consensus of the committee that that's what you want them to do. Right. Okay. So does that meet with everybody's approval? Question? Well, you should declare them surplus right. in that resolution. Add the All right. So in the surplus, surplus. we need to just to be it. official. Right, but when do you want, when the resolution comes back, do you want it to declare them surplus and advise where you disperse them to? Well, yeah, then they'll come back with a list. So 
still do one resolution sure. next time. For me. But now I vote in favor of that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if we know what we're voting on, but that's okay. All in favor? I <laughs> oppose. Carried. We'll try to we'll try to finish up quick on this. These metal boxes that you can see have been listed on eBay at one point in time. The old metal ballot boxes. Two years. And we got no. All they are is they're just steel boxes that absentees. They were our first ballot boxes. Um, not big enough. We just um, want permission to go ahead and, and take yeah. these things and scrap them. They're, they're not worth anything to anyone. They're just a steel metal box. They might be. How do you know you're garbage? And you somebody right. Well, well let's be somebody else's too. treasure because it's not for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, would someone like to make that motion that he, they can dispose of Supervisor McDonald's second <laughs> by Supervisor Leggett, we'll say. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. And last, not, last but not least, we'll get out of your hair. The contract for the voter referral application agreement uh, we sent over to Brian. Mary, I don't know if you've got any information. There were a couple. We can come back with this, actually, because there were a couple problems with it that Brian saw yep. that he wanted to discuss with us, but he's been busy, and we've been busy, and we haven't gotten back to each other. But we did get it to Brian to ask Brian to review it. So when we come to committee, we were ready for it. Um, I don't know if you want to add to that, Mary. There are a couple issues with the contract, but Brian was suggesting that maybe you work out the details with the board now, and then we can always fix the contract after. Okay. Um, and this is basically for the software for the VRAs? That's what was That's in the packet here. Yeah, yeah. that was oh, in the no. beginning of the packet. That yeah. was, okay. I think it was nine, what was it, about 9,000? Um, nine. Oops, sorry. So. That's on your NTS. Yeah, yeah, nine thousand. Right. So that's for the um, three-year period. And then the hardware, which um, Mike had worked, we saved us a little bit of money. Um, came to oh, twenty-nine. Nineteen seventy-five. For the computers, Mike got us a price on it, a better price on the computers than what they had given us. Okay. We gave it to Mike and he followed through. So it's basically um, a request to go ahead and. and sign into this agreement, to get the money and to sign into this agreement to uh, to go with the VRAs and uh, basically what it's all about. And what we, There's a few things we've got, to, nothing serious from what I understand, Mary, that we've got to work out with Brian on the contract for the chairman and the administrator to sign. Or the we can do that after you approve it. It's just language stuff. All right, so we can go ahead to approve this and then you'll work out the language? Yep. And we have the money within budget. Okay, good. So I'd like to uh, motion to approve <laughs> that. Supervisor Montesi, second by Supervisor McDonald. Any more discussion? All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. much. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. I know you better crack your lip. This next one. Oh, thank you. Those prices have kind of dipped recently in the last year or so, but it's good. But that would, that would, to me, would be the. We'll get it. Oh, you got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're all set. All right, mine's quick. It's just a teenager agenda. I just need some money. <laughs> just uh, request the money be transferred for the reserve fund for anticipated purchases that were already in the budget. And your total is what? Uh, twenty? Is that about twenty-five? Is that what we're looking at? Yep. Okay. Someone like to make that motion? Supervisor McDonald, second by Supervisor McDevitt. Any discussion? Can we have money in the reserve fund for these? Yep. Yes. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. You got your money. Oh, I'm sorry, Supervisor Seaver. Of course. I'm so sorry. I just don't want this opportunity to go by, and I know that I think at the full board meeting our county administrator mentioned it, but we were told how helpful you were with and with the um, bond threat that came into the county and how much work you did on that and, and really your expertise. So I, just, I know we were all so appreciative, but not only do you come to committee every month to save money, fix all the computer problems, short staff, but you know, you're finding criminals too, so we're really pretty stiff. Well, Bud made me walk out first, so. <laughs> <laughs>
do something. But thank you. We all yeah, you feel the great, same way. Thank great you. Great job, Mike. Yeah. But Kevin gave everybody the afternoon off but me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the <laughs> hey, county it. auditor. Can you help me with that? It sounded like there was no bad. I'm going to blow up a school. Yeah, a problem of you know social services. It's just that's what you said. Hello. I'm also mostly looking to just move money, um, but I do need a little bit from the contingent fund. My audit clerk went from part-time to full-time as of January 1st, but because she wasn't full-time in the budget process, her salary went into the part-time salary code. So I need to just move that from part-time to full-time salaries. And because her raise and her step increase was also not included in the budget because we didn't know what it would be, I need um, about $810 from the contingent fund to the county auditor salaries full time to cover her salary for the year correctly. Uh, I'd like to make a motion and we can discuss. Uh, Mr. Montessi, you want to bring that to the floor? Yes. All right, a second by Supervisor McDonald. All right, discussion. Well, can we start with you, Kevin? you have any no, comments? No, there's no objections. Okay. Any, all right. Any discussion? And um, so full-time health benefits, things like that? That's that, already, that was already budgeted. Right. Okay. So just, yeah. yeah, this is just moving her salary from one code to another and making up the difference in her step. Okay. And do we still have $810 left from I think yesterday? We do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we do. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, yes. can I just say something quickly? I just, Carla, I know we've encouraged our department heads to come to committee, and <laughs> I know it's not everyone's favorite thing, so I just wanted to say thank you, and I know she's doing an incredible job for you yes. and for your efforts as well. So we look forward to hearing how your training process is going and the changes okay. you're making. We have our first one Friday. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Aren't we all set? We're turning this over to Joanne because she's been dealing with it. Please. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we have a resolution request to renew a National League contract. Five years ago, we entered into a contract with National Business Equipment for all of our copiers and printing needs. Um, they are proposing a renewal, another five-year renewal. Um, however, um, Philly Office Systems also came in with a proposal, so we actually would like to hear from both of them on the proposal, and it's up to the committee to decide which way we want to go with that. Well, why don't we just start with the uh, national? We've been going with, we've had them, so let's start with them. They can make their presentation, and then we'll follow okay. up with you. Is that all right? Is that all right with the committee? Yes. Okay. Is this all in the packet already? It's all of it? Not all of it, no. Okay. <coughs> Is this on Finch paper? It feels flabby. It feels like Finch paper. Yeah, it's a laser paper. Oh. Yeah. 
Just saying, it feels a lot better than our county neighbor. It's a free sheet. What? It's a free sheet paper. I was going to say, you of all people should know that. Hi, class. No one just came. No, you don't. Yeah, look at the light. I'm locked, isn't it? It's a free sheet. Oh, the thing. Can I get to vote on that, too? Okay, so my name is Brian Muller. I'm the Senior Vice President of National Business uh, Equipment. And I brought with me today um, my uh, Vice President of Services, Sean Seville. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, as well as uh, Russ Mahar. Hello. Uh, Hi, all, all of us um, have over 20 years' experience in the industry. Russ has been with National Business Equipment for 35 years. He's our Director of Technology. Um, Sean and I are both North Country residents. Uh, I live right off West Mountain. Uh, my daughter actually was an intern with Martin Offer do, do a few years back and um, just, uh, just graduated from Omni Law last week. So um, we're local people. We're North Country residents. Sean is as well. Um, so um, let me kind of give you a little bit of a discovery uh, from when it started back in 2011 um, when uh, uh, County Administrator Paul Dusick as well as uh, Joanne Julie and Bill Mahar um, uh, wanted to find a way to reduce their print spend. Um, so they invited uh, a, you know, many resellers in to design a solution. Um, and we did the discovery and we were awarded um, uh, the resolution. Uh, and with that resolution, they had the foresight to set up a renewal to uh, further in, you know, redu you know, increase your savings. So this is the resolution, and the resolution for the five-year renewal was 5577, which I've circled on the first page, okay? Um, and that was to keep all of your existing equipment. So the goal was to uh, keep all of the equipment that you currently have for an additional five years, and we would provide the support at that point. Um, <coughs> as we've grown, uh, we've designed a uh, an, <coughs> excuse me, an improved and repressed solution. The second page is a press release. And the press release, which was written in, which was done in 2012, basically states what we did uh, for the county. The county at that time had 347 copiers and printers, uh, very few network devices, and what we did was we did a walkthrough and designed a uh, consolidation to 123 devices. Um, with that, we made sure that we had redundancy in the apartment, in the departments to uh, make sure that their productivity remained uh, the same. So basically, uh, if they need, all the departments had the ability to print color, but we put a copier as well as a printer, and one or the other would give them the ability to print in color. Um, so by doing that, the total 10-year solution was projected to be $538,000 for the county. When we designed this solution, um, we obviously we won the award. And this is what our objective was, and the county's objective as well, was to design a redeployment strategy that will extend the life of your printer assets control and minimize the costs associated with the reproduction of documents, eliminate the IT department's role as printer technicians and reduce their involvement with the management of the printer fleet. This would allow the IT department to focus on core business objectives. We streamlined the number of vendors because at that time there were many different vendors here um, and many different models. So we streamlined uh, our objective to consistency in pricing, programs, invoicing, <coughs> and support for your document production. Excuse me. <coughs> um, then we engaged, uh, you engaged with a partner who will provide proactive maintenance and support for the printer fleet and users. This would increase the reliability of printers and allow the users to complete their business processes without delay. So we're at the five-year time for the <coughs> potential renewal. 
And this is the discovery findings that we found over the first five years. Of the 70, 144 devices that are under contract, 17 of those devices are printing more than 50% of the volume. And less than, seven, less than 4% of the printing volume is in tone. So this is where we've been able to generate the significant savings. Because only 17 of the devices are printing you know, almost 50% of the volume, our recommendation is to replace those 17 devices. So from the 5577, which included keeping all your existing equipment, we're going to um, refresh the 17 areas that are, that are most heavily used so we can maintain productivity for the, ten for the remaining five years. The consolidation solution designed in 2012, as well as the proximity card readers that were installed, has driven over 80% of the volume to lesser expensive to use multifunction printers. This has allowed the county to extend the life of those network printers. The majority of the assets of the 144 that we're not replacing are desktop devices, printers or desktop MFPs, um, inexpensive devices but more expensive to use. And what our mission was through this solution was to drive the volume to the freestanding multifunction devices, which has happened, okay? And that's where the savings, and that's where we were able to, that was our mission, and that's where you were able to, to uh, save the money that you have so far. Because of, the, because of the solution designed in 2012, there's not a need for the county to assume additional costs for any paper cut accounting software, because the county, and, the, and led by, at that time, County Administrator Paul Dusick, um, with the consolidation program that they designed, um, were, was able to allow National to give them the advice to get the, by get the printing to the lesser expensive devices to use. So there's no need for any accounting software with this solution. So this is the discovery so far. The Warren County's current printing environment is as follows. 408,157 uh, black and white prints, 15,012 color prints are done monthly for the county for a total of 423,169. We have hundreds of clients in our managed print services program with us where we manage hundreds of devices for each of these organizations and to be under 5% color printing is exceptional. It's incredible. I mean, uh, so great job. So what I've done here briefly that you can view is uh, each of the devices in each of the departments and what your current situation is based on the volumes. Um, and then behind that, is your future solution. So next to the future solution are the devices that we'll recommend to be replaced. And some of this was copied, but they're, the pink are the ones that we've recommended to be replaced. And they're the heavy volume areas, your copy center, uh, real properties, and things of that nature. We've also take the, taken the initiatives to um, take the high volume devices and flag those and the low volume devices. So if we need to, over the next five years, we can redeploy assets to extend the life of your current assets. So if you go to, after the current solution, the page that says Warren County end of life replacements. So most of our clients, this is their favorite piece of our solution. All of the devices, the 17 devices that we were, are replacing, okay, you will then have these devices uh, as end of life replacements. So if a department grows or there's a need in a department for an additional device, okay, uh, all of these are available to the county. And Julie can confirm we did this with your current assets back in 
2011. 2012 was when we implemented it. So not only will we be managing 144 devices, but our solution includes an additional 15 uh, that you have in the bullpen, so to speak, that can be utilized um, uh, over the next five years. As need be. As need be. Yep. So we feel that we're an innovator in managed print services. We've got a book that will give you the references uh, and so of some of our clients. But a lot of our competitors and resellers will tell you how to implement a solution and what to do. But they don't tell you why you should partner with that particular organization. Uh, they can't execute the solution. So the, the strength of what National Business Technologies has been able to do is we, re, we, we advise the committee on uh, using the right assets in the right areas, okay, and ways to save money. And this is kind of a gift that keeps on giving, and you'll see this from the total solution. But we meet annually uh, with Joanne and the team to find ways to reduce uh, your spend even more. So why would you partner with National for a renewal? Number one, we're a local company, we're a New York, New York, New York based organization who specializes in managed print services. Number two, we have a guaranteed same day service for your money back. If we don't, okay, honor our commitment in regards to our response time, we'll pay one month of your service agreement back at no charge. And we're the only company in the in our industry that does that. Okay? Because our feeling is is people can talk about having response times. If there's not a penalty for not honoring it, they don't have one. So we're the only ones that have that and have the guarantee here as well. Uh, quarterly account reviews to ensure utmost efficiency. We've got the most reliable technology available. Our technicians led by Sean and Russ 2016 BEI Platinum Dealer Award for Service. That's awarded to the top 12% nationally. Over half of our technicians have received national recognition. Out of over 13,000 service technicians across the country, three of our service technicians are in the top 1%. Your technician, your dedicated uh, product technician, Dave Barker, uh, has a over 10 years of experience and currently ranks fifth in the nation out of 13,000 technicians. His first call efficiency is, it, is it, uh, at 86% and he has won the BEI Diamond Award the past three years. Most importantly, familiarity. Warren County employees are familiar with national business technology, the staff and the processes as well as the equipment. And as the Senior Vice President of National uh, Business Equipment, I'm your account manager, I manage your account, uh, and we'll do so if we're awarded the renewal. The next page talks about our money back guarantee and the language in that. And that's a two-pager. And then the final would be, what are the key reasons to stay with National? Number one, ease of use. Warren County users are already familiar with the operation of the machines. Uh, the recommended new machines use the same standard operation panels and drivers. Number two, excellent service. Warren County users know their technicians and their technicians know the users and their needs. The technicians are local. Our average response time since 2012 has been 3.67 hours and our first all First call effectiveness of 914 calls is 88 percent. Three parts and supplies. All of our technicians stock all their common parts in their vehicle. National stocks over a million dollars of parts uh, and supplies and ensure excellent service. Three is our Gold Alliance program, which you have a copy of. Four is consistency. Your account manager, Brian Muller, and product specialist Dave Parker live locally and have managed the county's account since the original implementation and have been awarded the renewal, will do so over the next five years. Please disregard the next two columns. Those are uh, a template I made in there on, so I apologize for that. So here's what you want to see, I, I believe. I mean, obviously, 
executing the solution is the is the uh, um, the most important part. But what I've done is I've drawn a I've designed a spreadsheet showing what we've done. You know, uh, you know, how have we done based on the original press release? So, at the time that we were engaged with the discovery at Warren County, the month the the average monthly cost was fourteen thousand nine hundred forty two dollars and thirteen cents monthly to print documents and everything was done transactionally you know uh, buying a toner here buying a printer here departmentally no control lots of local printers and everyone had the ability to print color uh, whenever they wanted so what we've done with our current costs with our solution currently we were able to reduce your cost down to eleven nine eighty nine fifteen and that includes the paper. The paper? Not no. that paper, no. <laughs> yeah. So, so far, for a five-year savings, we've saved you 134656 Now it's where it gets fun. So with our renewal option of fifty seven ninety five, dollars and the, the design to duplex the majority of the documents throughout the county, We've also been able to reduce your paper savings by about 20%. So your total cost now will be $75.99.89. So your 10 year savings, if partnering with National for an additional five years, will be $575,190. And at the end of the 10 year solution, Warren County will have gone 10 years without having to purchase any hardware. So no transactional hardware purchases, everything's been included in this solution. So from 2011 to 12 when we implemented, you had 347 devices with an average age of uh, eight years <coughs> old, eight years old worth of equipment. We've designed a solution giving you all new hardware and refresh the hardware after five years and we'll save the county $575,190 and we would treasure the opportunity to partner with you to finalize this solution. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Do we have any questions from the committee or should we go on to just listen to Celie's presentation? I can ask my questions at whatever time you feel is appropriate. But go right ahead. If you have it now, let's do it okay. now and then. Um, I have a couple of questions. One, I guess I... I have two, actually. One might be for our county administrator, our budget officer, wherever Frank was. Frank was? Yeah. Oh, Kevin, what is, we have a print shop code, and we put money in the print shop code every year, but on this presentation, it looks like the print shop code is washed out. What are we utilizing? Well, we still use the print shop. Yeah. Can we want to answer that? What do we use that for we and why? We charge everything through the print shop. We pay the bills through the print shop, and then we have a revenue that comes in from the different departments that cover the cost. Because each department has to get charged for their print. So in this chart, it looks like we removed the cost of the print shop. No, print shop is Print shop is there. Uh, we, we, we've got the, the cost current. of the print shop. That's one of our devices. Okay, so under current cost, pre I guess I'm having a hard time reading the last chart then. You've got previous cost, and then you have current cost. Our current cost includes the print shop. Yeah. Okay. So, now so it's not really... A it is a saving oh. because we've included that uh, in our solution 5795 which includes the prints to the print shop. In 5795. Okay. And then um, I'm a little confused when I look at the volume that's generated. Take tourism, for example, or even the county attorney's office, but tourism sticks out to me a little bit more with the Adirondack Outlet Mall and the tourism line. They're almost number one in terms of usage. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they fall shy to um, social services, but they're not on this list to be replaced. So tourism currently has, um, the current volume is 4,366 uh, 4, in black and white and 1,106 in color, and their current volume is 383,899. That's their light count. That's how many, that much volume and half ounce. But I'm combining the Adirondack Outlet Mall. So that's six hundred and ten thousand. So is that not included currently on the solution? Uh, 
Joanne, the outlet hall? Because um, I don't have that as a location. It's on the last page. <coughs> it's, on the last page. it's an HP. Oh, it's an HP. Okay. It's just the printer and the old printer. It's, yep. it's only got maintenance on it, so the toners are covered under this. So, so you just replace the toners on something like that. So supervisor sees it. That's on our receiver, correct? Receiver. That's, our, that's on our contract. Uh, that's included in the solution. And it did, uh, this particular month that we accumulated that, it did four prints. The outlet month. I still apologize because I have no idea what your terminology means, um, and I'm happy to learn it. Yeah. But I guess what my question is, the so you don't replace that equipment at that outlet mall. It looks like it's being used a lot. You just replace the toner because we own the printer. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Uh, it's one of our HP printers that we have. We have other spares. We have like 25. Spares. Oh, we're down to like 50. Okay. And so if something does happen to that printer, we have a spare to put in there. Okay. And plus, with this renewal, we're going to have 17 additional devices that we'll be able to put in there. So we will have okay. extra, so we're not going to be purchasing anything. I guess I just, I know we approve a lot of things in committee to go out for contracts and major printing, you know, so I'm looking at these numbers and I'm thinking of all the different contracts we've approved in different departments for contract printing on top of this and just trying to wrap my head around. So it, and then I guess my last question is, in the five-year savings, we say 440000 10-year savings, 575. Is that an additional 575 or that's so it's the a 400, total for 10 years? for this year, for, for this, this five-year period, okay. plus the 134 that we saved in the first five years. So the majority of the savings took place in the first five years? Well, the majority of the savings okay. took place right now during the renewal. So you saved 134,000 for the first five years, and then years six through ten, you're saving an additional 440,000, 534 for a total savings of 575. Okay. Am I not looking at the right chart? Is there another chart? Then the last page. Right. Right. So, right. right. right here. so the first five years of savings there was 134. Yep. Okay. And, and then the next five years is going to be 445. Okay. So. Okay. So Are we good? Could we move on? Sorry, and uh, I just <laughs> I don't know. Well, and, uh, so just one yeah. for clarifications. Um, right now, it's equipment um, nine thousand seven thirty-three per, per per month, right. and it will be five fifty-seven ninety-five per month from here. So it's there's another four thousand right off the bat of savings. That's correct. Right. Yep. Right, anyone else? All right. Let's move on to the Feely presentation, then, please. <coughs> <laughs> Is it appropriate if I sit? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, my name is Tim Seeley Jr. I'm the director of business at my family business, Seeley Office Systems. Um, our family business, in case you're not familiar, has uh, been headquartered in Glens Falls uh, for the past 35 years. And um, I am part of the second generation succession team, along with my sister and my first cousin. Uh, but I've been with the business for 10 years now, so just getting kind of settled, kind of feels like. But um, we appreciate the opportunity to be here um, with you guys today and take part in this. Um, we were able to uh, extensively do the research as provided here of your current technology, get a good understanding of that, get a good understanding of what your cost is. Um, and also with collaboration with Julie, uh, Julie and Joanne, we've also been able to understand what needed to change for the next five years. So as an outsider coming in, uh, we're very familiar with the industry, but we did spend the time to get to know your environment. Um, so when we put together a proposal, you could feel confident that what we put together is an understood extensive proposal of what's actually needed. Um, through that process, uh, we were able to uh, collecting all the information, we were able to come up with a proposal to replace all of your existing leased equipment with brand new leased equipment through our Konica Minolta uh, manufacturer. Konica Minolta is a manufacturer our, our business has been partnered with for the last 20 years, so it's our backbone for what we provide to our customers. 
Um, and yeah, also, one of the reasons we're partnering with Conoco Minolta is that across the country and in New York State, they're very good at securing contracts that would help counties such as yourself. So one of the uh, things Julie had mentioned to us when we started this process was five years ago, as Brian was saying, you guys went out for an extensive bid and part of the language was written that you could renew that option and that protects you guys to make that decision. So part what we were sort of tasked with is to come up with a proposal and utilize a contract that you guys could comfortably approve uh, under the same manner. And we've been able to do that through the NJPA. I don't know, Julie, if you want to attest to that, but that was a big deal for us to find something uh, with Julie that worked. Um, so anyways, based on all the information, based on utilizing the cooperative agreement, what we've put together for you guys is a comprehensive proposal to replace all your new equipment or all your existing equipment with new equipment, saving you guys 25% of what you're currently spending now. So if you look at that report that Brian put together, um, on the current cost, and I, I think on our proposal you'll see that as well. Um, five years ago, a huge bid took place, a lot of work went into it, and you guys came up with a number of 9,700. I had 9,800. Joanne, I thought we verified that. But either way, 9,700, $9,800. And that's a comprehensive bid with six to seven manufacturers going after this. Five years later, and this is the trend of technology, five years later, a local vendor partnered with a manufacturer is able to come in here and save you guys $2,300 off that number. And that is mainly why we have talked to Joanne and said, please give us that opportunity to get in front of you guys because it's something to significantly take a look at. Coupled with that, Joanne had tasked us with the, uh, it was asked of us that we, we are a smaller family business in Glens Falls, so it was important to her to come up with references that could provide the county the peace of mind that our dealership could handle that thing, uh, handle the implementation and handle the ongoing service. Um, throughout that process, we provided to her two main references. I put together a reference page for you guys to take a look at um, so you can kind of get a feel for who we work with in the county. Um, but we connected you guys with the Glens Falls National Bank. We deal with our main headquarters and we deal with all their off-site locations and we connected you guys with Hudson Atwater's Health Network. And those are our two largest accounts that were most similar to your current environment. They're all using Conoco Minolta devices. They're all doing the management solution that you guys are looking for. Um, and through that process, uh, Joanne was able to, I hope, verify that the references checked out for us and verified that working with Steelers has been a good experience for them. So that was a big turning stone for us to still provide that reassurance. Um, the other thing that I think is really important when you look at that page is that when my family, my parents met uh, selling uh, for Xerox in New York City, when they moved up to Warren County, we've been in Warren County for 35 years, that's where we all live, it's where we all serve. You'll see that page. Our business model is much different than most of our competitors. We're very focused on Warren County alone. Warren, Washington and Northern Saratoga, but our main business, our main activity is in Warren County. And I think what I hope is when you look at that reference page, you will see that we are successful here in Warren County now. And all of those customers are faced with these decisions. This is something we're dealing with all the time. So in conclusion, from our proposal, I would like a chance to comment on your renewal option, but in condition, our proposal is to come in, provide you guys with brand new equipment, achieving a 25% savings off what your current environment is, and you're getting to partner with a local company that you have the reassurance can handle this. In reference to the renewal proposal, I've had a lot of time to think about uh, the proposal and what you guys are, are deciding on. My main takeaway is this, the best way I can put this. What technology today are you using that 10 years from now is going to be efficient and operable, right? It's the world we live in. It's just changing. When I look at my cell phone, right, I'm on two years, maybe. Maybe I'm happy, right? My computer, I'm three to five years, if I'm lucky. What we did for you guys is we went out and did some research ourselves. Right now, our company services 1,000 copiers, printers in Warren County. 
So 1,000 machines we currently service in Warren, in Warren County. Of that research, the average lifespan is 4.2 years. Okay? So that is where we're headed. That is the life we live in today. That's the world we live in. People are doing this for many reasons. Office changes always happen. Volumes happen. Just like it's happening here. Every five years, something changes. You've got to kind of move things around, replace things. IT compatibility. We want to stay compatible with all the servers, the Google prints, the different things. Customers want to achieve that. But the most important reason why people upgrade their machines every five years at the latest is to avoid the pain of the durability in an inoperable machine. And that is our main focus for you guys to consider. Can a machine last six, seven years, eight years? Yes, it could. But what's that look like in your environment? Years eight, nine, and 10, what's that gonna look like here? And currently, the only contingency plan you have, besides the guarantee that they'll come fix it often, okay, is you have 17 machines that are being deemed today need to be replaced. And you're gonna use that as your reassurance that if something happens in year eight and nine, we're going to take that old technology and we're going to roll that out. And that's the contingency plan. And that's, that's mainly why we feel that there's a, main, there's a major consideration for you guys here. So in Nationals case, you have 131, 132 devices. Of that, you're only changing 17 of them. And if you take the 17 of them, that's leaving you with 100 devices that you're making commitment to for 10 years. And that's our main focus for you guys. So you have an we have an opportunity here. Um, in conclusion of all these things, you have an opportunity to partner with a local business that's been successful in Warren County, and we've demonstrated that through our references, utilizing award-winning manufacturer technology in an approved cooperative agreement that all the language has been spelled out that the board can be comfortable with, saving 25% of what you're currently spending now. And I appreciate your time. Any questions? Anyone from the committee? Rachel? <laughs> Before I even raise my hand. Um, can I include paper? Paper? So when you look at the number, the, the way the sheet, and I, I didn't realize there'd be an opportunity to pass stuff out, so I appreciate, you know, I, when you look at the number that Brian's talking about, paper we don't control. We, have, we don't sell, we don't provide. I'm in the paper business. I sell supplies. We, we can't be competitive. But paper is a line item that neither national or I have any control of. So if it goes up or down, we really can't quote it. So the main, main numbers are right now you're at 97.33. And as you see in our proposal, you, it brings you down to $2,300 less than what you guys are at now. So I, I Excuse, okay, just a minute. I would like to ask Joanne, though, have you had any issues dealing with National as far as servicing the machines, them getting back to you when there were issues? They have been extremely responsive to any phone calls we make, any issues we have. And uh, to my knowledge, I think everyone is happy with what we have right now. And, and, I, and, I, and I appreciate that. And that, that. I'm not trying to say that there's a... What I'm saying is that all of us can relate to old technology. So okay. that's, that's all. all right. yeah. Tim, Brian? So I, I disagree with Tim in regards to paper. And it is an experience with management services. And, you know, with, with our uh, um, uh, clients, we've got you know, clients that we manage over 500 devices. And we've been doing management services for over 10 years. Um, and I have uh, references and processes and, and our bios and things of that nature that I want to pass out. Okay. But Tim's incorrect in the fact that, number one, the devices that, were, that are not being replaced are printers. They're not. All the larger devices are being replaced. Okay? It's the printers, the ones that sit on a desktop that you don't want to print to. Those, and, and we have to prove that those assets last 10 years without any issue. We wouldn't, want, we wouldn't offer a support contract if they didn't. But more importantly, with the paper, we've proven that we've been able to reduce the paper spend in Warren County over the last five years. We've reduced it by 20%. Julie, can you affirm that? I keep track of the paper um, purchases and we've reduced our paper significantly. And Rachel, to your point, we do a bid for paper and our paper uh, price continues to go down actually. 
we have better right. paper pricing than anybody else. Right. Than I and Julia, I appreciate that feedback. I don't think this is an appropriate form for a back and forth. No, I was going to no, say we're I, done with that. Fine. I just at this point in time, I guess my question is, do we have a recommendation, Julie, or from Mike? I don't know, Joanne. We've heard yours, but is there feedback that? Um, you know, anything you'd like to provide at this time. I, I'm always a big fan of looking at new opportunities and thinking outside the box. I like local. I'm glad we're looking at two different companies. Um, and I like the idea of it all being new equipment. But what I'm interested in is if I feel a little unusual to have both of this in front of us here today. So I'm just wondering what the recommendation is. <laughs> or is it here because you don't have a recommendation? I think it's a committee decision. Um, okay. I can tell you that legally um, we can entertain both uh, uh, both options. You know, national we have the resolution that authorizes the five year extension um, with uh, ceilings. They did provide me with an NJPA contract, with a, which is a national contract. We are a member of National Joint Powers Alliance, so that is an option for us. Um, I looked through it. Yeah, you know, it is a valid option for us. Ed, do we need an executive session? I I have no I mean, Mary, where are we at? This, this feels a little <laughs> out of the... Uh, yeah. I'm a little yeah. I think we're, most of us feel very uncomfortable yeah. when you yeah. have two companies here and you're sitting trying to decide, are we going to go with this one, are we going to go with Generally that one? Generally, the prices aren't discussed in open meetings, so <laughs> I'm not sure how we got here. Oh. Uh, well, I... But if you take a look at the... It's your choice. <laughs> I'd like to. This just open. I'll make, I'll make, make it. This uh, contract terminates at the end of this month, correct? Uh, the new one, the new one would take effect in correct. July. So, are you saying we are being tasked with? We have to make a decision today. Well, it's on the agenda for today. Resolution requests for the renewal. All right, agenda. Supervisor McDonald. I'd like to make a motion to also in the second session. A second at the point. This is unprofessional, I think. So. Is, is that the feeling of the committee you'd like to go into executive session? Mr. Chairman, do, are, are we being asked to make a decision today? Well, it was on the agenda. If you want to table the motion until next but, month, then no. that's also an option, I believe. Yes. What is that going to the contract? I mean, it's Mary, what does that do to the contract? <laughs> I don't know if the contract has a 30-day extension. Some of them do. I'm not sure. I haven't read this one. Um, it does not. I don't believe Okay. So the contract would end on the termination date. I, I think I think we, we're, we're tasked with making a decision here. That was. So <laughs> can we, I do too. we vote on that? Do we have? Uh, executive session. Okay. If, if you want to go All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. We'll go into executive session then. We're back to action the resolution request the renewal of national lease and maintenance contract. Would someone like to make that motion? Supervisor Montessi. Second by Supervisor Leggett. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Harry. Thank you very much. I, just a matter of uh, information to, to Celia as well and both to National. We appreciate you both being here. Um, I'm very uncomfortable in the format that that was presented here today. Typically, I don't recall us going through a process like that. Um, but it, it comes down to dollars and cents. And we fight very hard for our positions. And we have a horrible task in front of us to cut positions over the next five years. So looking at a proposal that would increase $35,000 a year is something that I don't know how we can justify that to our employees when we're working very hard to reduce staff. Um, so I just want to be very upfront, honest, transparent, as you've seen throughout this process. But ultimately, you know, that's, that's how one of the big factors. I'd like, like, again, like to thank you for coming, both of you. Um, and at this point, as long as we need to move along on to the next committees, I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Supervisor McDonald, second by Supervisor McDevitt. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much.